for Brad McDonald. Thank you very much. I feel like it would have been like a cooler entrance. I was thinking this to myself instead of walking up here. If I just burst out from this wooden, <laughs> this like wooden coffin, wouldn't that be amazing? Cause like my medium sized bill just shooting out from it. Two lights on either side, you're having like a romantic dinner and then I come flying out with jokes about dicks and piss. Wow, what a night that would be. <laughs> Hello everyone, I have a lot of nervous energy. Um, I'm already sweating. Yeah. Oh, that killed with this wonder lover here. She does not, she's not sensitive to body heat maintenance issues. I am already sweating. Uh, I sweat a lot in public. It's very embarrassing when you're sweating a lot in public. So I developed an escape route for sweating. So say I'm at like a dinner party. This is my escape route. Say I'm at a dinner party. I find myself sweating profusely. It's very embarrassing. I excuse myself. I go to the washroom, okay? I go to the washroom, I find a hair dryer. This is the most important thing. I find a hair dryer, then I take the cord of that hair dryer, wrap it around my neck, and end my sweaty life. <laughs> Suicide joke off the top, who's having a great night? Oh my goodness. Wow. Um, I heard in a study recently that if you force yourself to smile, if you force yourself to smile for like eight minutes, it releases a chemical that makes everyone around you wonder what the fuck is wrong with your face. Oh. It's working. I realized recently I have all the habits of a depressed person. All the habits of a depressed person. Like, I smoke too much, I drink too much, I rarely bathe, I don't try that hard. But the only important difference between me and a depressed person is that I'm having a great time. Not trying that hard is the best. It's great. I like that laugh right there. I like when it gets silent. I get to hear individual laughs. Yours is very masculine. <laughs> Still don't remember that joke? That was great. I took the metro here. Something fun I like to do in the metro is I like to very politely, very politely offer my seat up to fit, able-bodied young teenage men. <laughs> no, please, sir. They don't know what the fuck is going on, you know? And I guarantee at least one of those teenage men is gonna go home that night, stand in front of the mirror naked and just wonder what's weird about his body. <laughs> and as a man who's aging, that makes me feel great. <laughs> Hello, everyone. My name is uh, John Brad McDonald. I am originally from uh, Nova Scotia. <laughs> It took a lot of energy, that yell. There's a lot that happened there emotionally. Um, yeah, I'm from Nova Scotia. Uh, a few fun facts about Nova Scotia. Everybody in Nova Scotia is named John Brad McDonald. Uh, the men, the women, the dogs, the cats, the plants. It's a strange place. Also, everyone in Nova Scotia, like myself, sounds like a pirate struggling to read. Uh, we'll, get, we'll get there one day. We'll get there. What else we have going on? So uh, I was at a party recently. It was a great party. Everyone's having a good time. And the people there started talking about the last party they had. Like, oh yeah, this last party was amazing. You know, we, it, was, it was so much fun. But then later on in the night, it got a little bit weird because uh, these like 35-year-old guys, uh, no one knew showed up. It got a little awkward, you know? And so we all laughed. Uh, but I laughed hardest because I was 34 at the time. <laughs> It's great to be young! <laughs> but I, I find that... Nice moment for us, I think. Um, but I find that um, drinking is still very fun. But as you get older, it changes. It changes drastically. It's usually people's reaction to your drinking that changes. You know? Because when I was 20, after a night out, I would say something like, Oh my god, I got so drunk last night! And my friends would say something like, yeah, last night was amazing, let's go out again tonight, alcohol has very little negative effect on our youthful bodies, Woo! <laughs> Sorry I made eye contact with you as I did my little dance. <laughs> and then something changed drastically, because I turned 30, and I would say the same thing, I'd be like, oh my god, I got so drunk last night! And my friends would reply by saying, yeah, you did. <laughs> Now I'm worried that I'll turn 40. I'll turn 40 and I'll say the same fucking thing. I'm like, oh my god, I got so drunk last night. And there'll be no reply because I will be desperately alone. 
Way to throw that in my face to that joke. Holding hands, being in love, god damn it! <laughs> I'll be alone in a bachelor apartment. My only memory of last night that I tried to sing Elton John's quintessential hit Benny and the Jets karaoke style in a non-karaoke bar? What? <laughs> And if you're wondering what that means, it means you're blackout drunk, you keep looking for the stage and wondering what the lyrics are. <laughs> the whole time you're just doing sad, forlorn bennies. Benny? <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, there's like a 21-year-old waitress there who's never heard of Elton John, and she's like, I think this guy's looking for Benny. Find his friend Benny, get this 40-year-old fuck out of here! <laughs> Any students in the audience? Any students here? Yay. Oh yeah, one, one like blackout drunk girl. <laughs> I find a lot of students take years off. I think it's great. You take a year off from everything. I think it's wonderful. Um, but I would like to save up my year off when I'm like when I'm like 48 and I'm not getting along with my wife and kids. You know, I'd be like, sorry guys, I gotta take a year off. <laughs> it's getting too hectic. You know. <laughs> My wife will say like, honey, what are you gonna do? You can't just abandon your family, what are you gonna do? I'm like, well, I'm probably just gonna backpack through Europe. <laughs> <laughs> Might lose my family, but maybe I'll find myself. <laughs> Son, stop crying, hand me that Spanish guitar. <laughs> I'm gonna learn it this year. Uh, you guys have been a lovely audience. Not all audiences are this lovely. Uh, I once got heckled. Heckled by a very drunk, very angry woman. And what was interesting about her heckle is I thought to myself, hey, her heckle might make a better punchline for the joke I was telling at the time. Okay, so let's try this as an experiment. I'll use this drunk woman's heckle. Tell me how this works. So I was listening to the news recently, and I heard a fascinating story about, eat shit! <laughs> it's great writing. <laughs> I'm Brian McDonald, thank you very much, guys.